Hello again, fellow orchid lovers. It's Danielle here with a video on how I grow my cattleya types in water culture. So when I first started growing cattleyas in water culture, um, I did it one way. And then I changed according to um, my abilities as a grower. And what I mean by that is when I first got cattleyas, I grew them much like this. So this is a dendrobium, but and I just showed you this in one of my videos, but I would have the glass pebbles and then the cattleya would just be resting on the glass pebbles and I would put the water up and the cattleya loved it. New roots, fantastic, fantastic results. Well, my life got complicated and I wasn't watering them or dumping them as frequently because with a cattleya, you can't really keep their feet wet for a really long period of time. I mean, if the orchid itself decides to grow somewhere damp, then that's their choice. But for the most part, if you keep the majority of the roots um, damp, you're gonna lose your roots. And so that's exactly what happened. I had amazing, wonderful results when I was keeping up with um, the semi-water culture, which is what Catleas prefer. Uh, so it would be two days wet and then five days dry. So I put the water in the glass and then on the third day I would dump it and they'd be dry for a couple of days, days and then you put the water back in the glass for two days and then you dump it. And as long as you keep up with that, semi-water culture is an amazing way to grow cattleyas. But in my life got too complicated for that. I would forget to dump them. I would forget to water them. And some of my plants died because I wasn't able to keep up with them. So um, the method that I've come up with now, even though I have a lot more time now, um, something that's just foolproof so far seems to be getting great results is I'm doing my version of semi-hydro with them. So semi-hydro is uh, typically done with um, either ceramics or the Leca beads that are made out of clay. Um, I use my glass pebbles and I'll show you the way that I do it. So. Um, I actually unpotted one of mine that I've had for a while and I'm going to show you how I pot it up. So this one is a seedling and she is my Brasso Cat, almost dropped it, Brasso Catlia Maikai. Um, she's a Brassable and a Dosa cross with a Catlia Boringana. Beautiful blooms on this, very excited. Nowhere near blooms. <laughs> but she's doing great. Um, I have only had her a few months, I think. And uh, this was a new growth when I got her, which has grown on really well. She has another new growth there and her roots are going crazy. She did not have these roots when I got her. These she had, but these extensions on the roots, she did not. And I had her in my version of semi-hydro, but the container I had her in wasn't really rigid and it kept on potting her. So I've decided to put her in a deeper container that's a little more rigid. Um, so she's the one I'm gonna be potting for you. I have two candidates that I'm gonna be crossing over for you and we're gonna follow, um, but she's the one I'm actually gonna show you how I pot. So let me just get something to put the, the brie in. So the first one that I'm gonna be doing is another seedling. And this one is my new LC Hauserman Sultan Summer Spectacular. So cute, darling little plant. So we're just gonna take her out. She hasn't really been soaking as long as I would like. But here she goes. I'm gonna take all the media off. So I prefer unpotting orchids in bark a lot more than moss. Moss is extremely hard to get out. Um, bark can have its challenges too because the, the roots tend to wanna to stick to the bark um, and you don't wanna rip your roots or harm your roots. So sometimes it's a little difficult to get them out. But for the most part, um, you know, if you soak it really good, the bark will come off and you might have to, well, look at that. 
little plantlet. She's got a root, we'll grow her on. Um, you might have to soak it more than once. So like for instance, there's a fair amount of bark still on here, as you can see, that doesn't wanna come off without hurting the roots. So I'm not going to hurt the roots on this tender of a plant. She's, she's got enough to deal with, with being so tiny. So what I'll do is I'll just put her back in the water. Now, this long root right here is not viable. Now, Cattleya roots will branch, old roots will branch. So if it's still, you know, firm, you can leave it. But if it's squishy, mushy, no substance to it, that's a dead root. So you can just remove the vellum in if you'd like, which is what I prefer to do, or you can cut it off, whatever you, you prefer. I prefer to remove the vellum in. So if God forbid she dumps her root system, she still has something to draw moisture. Um, it's not ideal. It's not gonna hydrate her the way a, a, a healthy root would, but it's better than nothing. So I'm just gonna put her back in her water over here so that she can just get some more of that um, bark all of her roots without harming her. I'm gonna clean my hands. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the next one, which is my LC yellow bird. So again, she hasn't been soaking as long as I'd like, but basically I just squeeze the pot because there are roots that are attached to it and I want to kind of break them free without snapping them. Now she hasn't, she, she hasn't soaked long enough. We'll skip that one. We'll just let her soak for a little while longer. So let me show you what I do when I pot them up. So we'll show you, um, my Brasso Cattleya Maikai. So again, I had her in this, she really liked it, but unfortunately it's not really rigid enough for her. So what I did is um, I have one of those wood burning tools that has like a fine tip on it. It, it heats up much like a soldering iron, um, but it's for wood, you know, wood burning. And what I did is I just took her and I held her in the cup these are just cheap plastic cups. Um, I prefer the clear plastic because then I can see what the roots are doing. I did have them in solo cups, but then I couldn't see the roots and that drove me crazy. So I trans them, transferred them recently all over to clear plastic cups. So I just would hold her in and look to see where the bottom of her roots are. So you see the bottom of her roots? And then I just took a marker and I made little marks on the cup where I wanted the holes. And then I heated up the soldering, uh, the wood burning tool and I just put two holes in the cup. Okay. So the way that we're gonna pot her up is we're gonna put our pebbles. In the cup up to those holes. Do you see that? They're just there above the holes. Now this part, unfortunately, I'm not gonna do really close to the camera because I can't hold it and the orchid and put pebbles in at the same time. So hopefully you'll be able to kind of see what I'm doing. Um, so then you take the orchid and the bottom of her roots are gonna rest on the pebbles you already put in and then very gently, cause these, you know, they have some weight. You don't wanna crush the orchid roots with it. Very gently, just gonna drop. Some more pebbles in. Just kind of work it around the root system. Oops. Pebble down. Okay. So now she is secure in that pot. You see? So you can see the orchid roots go down to about here and that's where the holes are. So the way that I water these types of orchids in my uh, semi-hydro setup, which is my version of it, I have this other, this other cup that has no holes in it. 
So this goes inside this. Once a week, I put the water up to the top of the beads, not over any new growths or anything like that. I'm very careful about that. But I'll put the water up to the top of the beads and I'll let the orchid sit in that for an hour. And then I come back, I take the inside cup, which is gonna be hard to do on camera, but I take the inside cup out and all the water from here down to those holes drains out. And there's water left in the reservoir. So the plant just got a drink and now there's a constant source of humidity for the plant. And more nine times out of 10, the orchid decides to put her roots down in the reservoir. And I let them. Um, I'm of the strong opinion that an orchid knows what it's doing. When it refuses to put its roots down into the pot for some reason, it has a reason. If it decides it wants to go in the reservoir, I let it do that as well. And so far, so good. Um, yeah, so that's the way that I grow my Cattleya types in water culture. Now, like I said, if you have the discipline for semi-water culture where you put the uh, Cattleya in the glass and you just change out the water, you know, you water it for two days, then you take the water out and you let it dry. They do really love that. And the root growth is amazing. And it's just really, really great. I know several people that grow their Cattleyas in semi-water culture and it's beautiful. It's, it's, they love it but I am not disciplined enough um, to remember to do that. So, <laughs> so this is the method that I've come up with that works for me with my Cattleyas. Um, and that's something that I really encourage all of you to do. If you wanna try water culture, my best advice to you is come up with work, what works for your environment, for your growing method, for the time that you have, all those things, you know, the plant has certain needs and see how you can fulfill those needs with what you have. Because um, I've said this before, when I first started growing, I was so busy trying to figure out what other people were doing that I wasn't paying attention to my plants. My plants were telling me what they needed and I was paying attention to what other people were doing. And um, while they were still alive, most of them, they weren't doing as well as they could have done if I had just watched them. A plant is gonna tell you almost right away if it's happy or not. And if it's not happy, you can tweak things and find out what does make it happy. So that was a nice quick video. <laughs> the last two were not quick and I apologize for that. Um, but that's basically how I grow my Cattleya orchids in water culture. I will give you an update next week on how they're doing, um, as well as my dendrobium and my intergeneric and my phalaenopsis that I showed you. Um, but until then, I hope you guys all have a fabulous week, weekend, whatever it is that we're up to. And um, I will talk to you all next time.